Walker. Tomorrow's here to help us make the most out of our outdoor spaces all the way through the summer sunshine with some stylish shade solutions. I can't wait until I need a shade solution. So T, this issue is all too familiar to you. You have a south facing backyard with no trees, right? We get a lot of sun and I've actually been stumped for a few years on what the best shade solution is out here. So I've weighed all the options from cost to space planning and of course the visual aesthetic. And I'm gonna show you where we landed and also a fun, easy DIY option. Ooh, okay, I can't wait. So where did you land? What are some options that you can use for shade? Okay, so we love to eat meals out here at this big dining table, but the sun is right in our eyes, especially at lunchtime. So my main priority was to create shade over the eating area. And I know that, you know, a cantilevered umbrella could work, but this is a small space, so I didn't want to take up that footprint that an umbrella does. And then there are great retractable awnings as well, but they can be cost prohibitive because the mechanisms are more complex. So we went with something professionally made and installed from Shade Sales Canada. And these actually were inspired and come from Australia where it's a huge trend. And they're, they call it tensile fabric architecture. And it's, it was the trend was inspired by the desire there where they have so much sun to really protect against UV and, and that sun protection issue. So these are created by spanning tension fabric. It has to be super taut between posts. And in this case, we had, we've used the house. We have three anchor points, which we could use for a triangle. Now, if I had four, it would create a lot more shade, but this, this really works for us. And it's really important that there's that strength there. If you didn't have a sturdy fence, uh, you could install this post in a lawn, but you'd need a concrete footing because really this is sturdy enough to leave up until winter and it can withstand most uh, wind and weather. It just shouldn't bear the weight of snow. If you're interested in doing this, like a couple more things to consider that are interesting about it. Um, you need those strong posts for that that can withstand the tension and they should also be installed at different heights which gives it a cool looking shape but also helps with water runoff because you wouldn't want the water pouring towards your house you're making like a strategic decision about where it's going to drain because the fabric it's like it's a very fine mesh like a high density polypropylene and you get a mist when it's raining that comes through but mostly it drains off the side so I also have to say that I love this company is a family run business and they have a zero waste component where this is the same fabric as my shade and they make garden grow bags and tote bags out of the leftover fabric. So I love to see some of that innovation as well. That is very cool. Can you take it down like you're gonna have to take it down for winter but can you wash it? It doesn't need to be washed. It can be hosed off. It's not really like a fabric. It's more of um, a sturdy like plastic mesh. It's okay. very maintenance free, but you could hose it down and I'll take it down easily at the end of the season. That is awesome. Now I love this idea and I love that you have a DIY version people can make for under $150. The professionally installed option starts at about $500 for an 8 by 8 by 8 standard triangle, which I think is a good deal if it's going to last 15 or 20 years. But I have a really cute idea for an easy, more temporary shade option that's kind of done by the same principle. And I've just used some outdoor fabric and I'm actually making this because I'm gonna use it as a movie screen on our fence for outdoor movie nights. And the same principles would apply if you're gonna attach it overhead. So I'll just show you what I've got here and I've got a few different steps. So I've got a piece of outdoor fabric that I had left over from a project. I have hemmed the edge and I've hemmed it using hemming tape, but because I don't have a sewing machine anymore, but if you had, if you stitched it, it would be more durable. And then on the corner, I have folded over that corner and attached a grommet and using a grommet kit, which is easy to find online. 
I've got marine grade rope and then you can actually also use a lighter or a match to um, it's it's nylon so it'll melt and you can use a lighter to melt the end so it doesn't fray and then on the other end listen one of these knots is called a bowlin and one is a figure eight and you guys have to google that yourself <laughs> but you just want it to be sturdy um, I've attached a carabiner to the end and essentially this carabiner it you choose the length of rope you need based on where you're going to attach it and then you can just put an eye hook in the other end and then clip it in and there you have it so you have all four corners done you can i mean obviously the cost is going to be dependent on how big you want to make it and what type of fabric but all of these tools you don't need very much all of the tools were under sixty dollars for everything I'm using to get this job done and it's going to be super fun and at the end of the day this is a more temporary shade I would because you're not going to have that same tension um, it's not going to withstand you know high wind or bad weather but you know you just put it up on a sunny day enjoy it and then take it down and take it inside or store it somewhere safe to keep it in good condition when you're not using it. Well done, Tamara. Thank you for that. I love that you looked up all those knots. And we will look, look up how to make it as well on our website, cityline.tv. Yes. Really great ideas.